Taxman. Oh, wait a minute. Look at, oh, look at this. Folks. Now he's going to go for that damn audit. And look at this. injured so many people already. And oh my! And there's that stunner from that powerbomb position on top of his shoulders. And this is it for him. This is a match. Will can be over at the beginning of this part here? And yeah, it is. Oh, come on. This is not a good way to treat the fans here, especially me. I already have, once again, another gripe I have about UWA. I'm going to attack him and walk away with Victor here once again, possibly injuring Steve Heber. Now, I don't know what to say, folks. I mean, you know, obviously, you see who could possibly be instant audit, but I always see people are able to show up at Holy Night Bash and actually utter the words, I respect you. He's going to be on the injured list. Folks, what a the way this match turned out, folks. And you'll see people just die inside of Holy Back to uttering those words of attacks, man. So I'm going to see at this upcoming event in which see people could be really respecting the tax man. for a third time. This is what put Destroy Way in the back. But, oh my god! The enters on the steel steps! Well, we're back, folks. Look at that commercial. The Holy Bash is on live on Holy Night, October 31st. So, one of the biggest CPVs. But, of course, we already have a few huge matches. And that's for the card already. And, of course, we will talk about the tournament matches. Of course, the Coco with the CC Hardy in the finals at Holy Bash. Oh, let's go backstage and I guess Olivia Ariano. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Look at that. Look at that briefcase. that and oh 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 wait a minute oh look at this typical racist Arisaya that, that real jobber Arisaya and, oh my that, that Russian leg sweep with the Singapore King around the back of that trash can because remember these two Olivia and Arisaya they do meet in the border brawl at Hall Night Bash where the only way to win is to throw your put over the Mexican border and Aaron is trying to further weaken Olivia already. Wait, what? Yeah, you heard me, New Seaman. You, you know damn well there's a border brawl at Hall Night Bash between Arisaya and Olivia Ariana. And look at this, Arisaya is using those those haymakers on the Olivia Ariana with absolutely no remorse behind it. Oh my. Oh, Jesus Christ, please save this company. Disregard that last line and look at this. Oh, oh I told it absolute mockery to Olivia's throwing her to just take out the trash there. And man, folks, I mean, I guarantee you, the entire Mexican community is going to be all supporting Olivia Ariano going into Holy Night Bash indeed. The following contest is a tag team match on his way to the ring. Now residing in Atlanta, Georgia, Filmo. Folks, so now it's time for the next these four competitors to lose their mixed tag team match virginity. Man, that was dumb. But here comes Filmo, of course, the man who's scheduled to face 
Luke Fowler in a huge grudge match at Holy Night Bash after Luke Fowler issued the challenge on the last episode of Assault. Of course, Fimbo challenge or accepted the challenge. And Fimbo is one of the most hated individuals in the human roster today. He's up with the likes of Uncle Sam and the Nation of Violence. And quite frankly, Coco does have a point for those people out there who so support Coco, who, who are behind her in this whole, you know, this whole mission to, you know, to uh, avenge Mickey James after leaving you to go to TNA. Now, I'm sure some of those Coco supports could turn on her. This was simple fact that she's teaming up with Fimo here tonight because Fimo's that much of a heel, uh, uh, that much of a hated man here in BWA right now. Now, introducing his partner. Now residing in Silver Spring, Maryland, she is everyone's favorite Indian, Coco. Yes, folks, it's one thing, at least we all know that Mickey James is supposedly Native American, but she pretty much just stole Coco's gimmick going into TNA. And I'm, but I'm just throwing that one out. Wait, Mickey James in TNA? I don't know if Coco even knows about that yet, and I'm sure she's going to be quite pissed. I mean, if you find out that Mickey James and Tina, think about it, folks. I don't think she's the likes of Mona Loca, Athena, Ross, all the people that she's been, you know, you know accusing, that she's going to make her, she's going to destroy all those people who has had some of the good victims leaving the way. You can almost say that Coco, you know, if she's true to her work, she's going to take out the entire teammate, lost her all by herself. Why would you want something to do with from the TNA? Part of the way the TNA's been, that might be a sweet idea. Now introducing their opponents. From Dallas, Texas, Ross Driven Mitchell. I'm sure all you fans will be very briefly on this one. And I'll just mark out the huge Vicey Coco show on the next episode of Impact. Yes, I did say the huge folks. If you don't know what the huge is, you can watch Fire's Man Nature and Disinvite Demon Part 4 to understand that one. Yeah, that's pretty much one of our common here's catchphrases. But anyways, here we go. Ross Mitchell, the coach team of EWA, putting this match together by himself and quite frankly, folks. I don't even want to yes, I know Coco, Ross are not seeing eye to eye. And well, I don't want to think of Ross is going to do if he gets his hands on women in a, in a match that he actually sanctioned here in EWA. So I want to know what happened between him and Megan Fox, but of course, yeah, that reminds me of Wild and that one. Here comes Stacey Hardy, woman, and of course, won by the Swamp of Cage, no thanks to Pink Angel. And of course, I'm just going to see a piss on the dime on that one. We see Stacey Hardy team play on Coco in the finals, and we're going to become a little contender for in this change of at playing the fame. Now introducing his partner from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She is the self-proclaimed Queen of the World, the Queen Bee, Stacey Hardy. Folks, I mean, Stacey Hardy and Coco face off for the first time one-on-one -on -one at the Polonet Bash in the finals of the Double X Champ Women's Championship Tournament. Quite frankly, this is a dream match, you can say. This is basically a battle between old school versus new school. This is a battle between, like, if you could say, the veterans and the established new star, so to speak. I mean, Jason Hardy is a UKB original, and Coco, of course, came on the scene here in UWA in late 2007. Actually, just almost three years ago today. And look at this, the match is under, finally underway here. Now, all four of these individuals in the ring here. You know, of course, Kogo has been so, done so many things in the last three years. I put, put on one of the top double X's here in UWA, but of course, Stacey Hardy not ready to, to pass the torch just yet. As you notice, folks, this is not your typical mixed tag match, whereas, you know, one person in at a time for a team with a woman tags in, the males have to leave and vice versa. This is actually a tornado tag match with the mixed tag here. The first ever done here in the UWA in recent memory, in my knowledge, I could be wrong here. Ron, please correct me if you want to correct me now. Well, in recent memory, you're right, and I'm sure to the fans' knowledge, this is one of the first you know, intergender, you know, tornado tag, mixed tag matches we've seen here in UWA. Of course, one of the most famous ones is the Sex and Violence match, in which it was Pimps and Thugs and the Angels taking on 
sex and violence in the World's Hardest Tag Team in an elimination intergender tag team match back at Bloodshed you know, of 2008. That's something I always have to put you over on Rock Dog. It was something I, no matter how much I bash on Rock Dog, I give him credit. He is the UWA historian here. Oh, look at this. This Coco actually going against Ross here and holding her own. And court. I think all in about the same thing as the film of that no, no good son of a bitch. This toys taking out Stacey Hardy here with no remorse. At least look at Ross. At least, at least he's not doing anything dastardly to Coco. At least not yet. Of course, we all know how Co Ross Mitchell taking exception to. And oh, look at that a knee to the referee Robert Sweet. I don't know if that looked like to my point of view inadvertent. I mean, yes, you know, Coco, Ross, you know, does not seem eye to eye. I mean, no matter how, no matter what Coco says to Ross or what, how she treats him, I mean, he could, quite frankly, could not fire her because, quite frankly, only the Nicholas Enforcer has that authority. And look at this. And Sissy Hardy's gonna get a few shots in on the demo. And oh, wait, oh, look at this! My goodness, folks! Coco taking a spearing her own tag team partner. I guess Coco's going the extra mile to think that she is not in association with Filmo. You know, she's trying to go the extra mile, just going the extra effort to convince the fans that she and Filmo are, are, are not together at all, not associated one bit. Because obviously they're going to take Filmo, they're pretty much their reputation down here in the quickness. That's what she wants to put over. She's doing a good job at it. Obviously, it's pretty, not helping Filmo out at all this entire match. It was staying single-handedly trying to take them both down by herself. And he, oh my! He snaps up that the double head scissors that hurt Kenrana there to Stacey Hardy. And of course, we got Ross and Filmo still going at it here. Oh my! Believe it or not, folks, Luke Fowler originally agreed that it should be, a, it should be him instead of Ross in this match at first. But, of course, Ross, I guess he too has... And look at this! Wait! Wait, Ross probably liking that one, folks, and we saw Coco's jump up on Ross, push, put, a, put a lap right on right on on Ross's neck right there. I'm sure Ross got off pretty quickly on that one. Quite frankly, I'm sure Coco was no time trying to inflict some punishment on a Ross. But folks, you know, and originally, Luke Fowler actually wanted to be a part of this match, wanted to face Filmo, but I guess even contrary to popular belief in Ross has some animosity towards Filmo and actually wanted to and look at this speed up, wait, Uncle Sim oh look at this Luke Fowler put over Uncle Sim man Luke Fowler in the right place at the right time could have stopped this idiot from interfering in this this match of his mixed tag team match my god thank goodness he put stop this I was about to throw a fit here yeah I have no idea how much I was about to just get out of my seat and leave if I saw this interference here. But I guess not. Luke Fowler trying to stop Uncle Sam here before he can put a stop to this match. Fighting on top of the stage here. And let's, uh, for some reason, still steps are involved as well. I think one of the ring crew guys or one of the movers backstage just left it there like a back, like a backup steel steps. Look at this. Oh, Uncle Sam with a twisting neck breaker. And Uncle Sam has the steps. Uh -oh, Luke, and, oh, look at Luke Fowler jumping up that drop kick. It's leveling Uncle Sam. This Luke Fowler still starts waiting for Uncle Sam to get out Oh, my God! Oh, wait a minute. He caught the steel steps. How did he do that? I could have sworn Luke actually hit him. He might have been dead. So, I mean, I know Luke Fowler wants to get his hands on Uncle Sim at some point, but in his mind, he figured that there was a bigger threat, and oh my! Now Uncle Sim hits Luke Fowler with that 50-pound steel steps. And folks, I'm gonna, I know I've said this so many times. My goodness, folks, obviously the steel steps won that exchange when, when it still meets flesh and blood. Flesh and bone, or the stain goes. But look at this. And... And look at this, Uncle Sam with that chicken wing there. You're not going to admit your own commentary botch there, Rock Dog? Eh, it's a botch, but eh, my kid, I'm sure someone left that. Look at this. Luke Fowler. Oh my, God, the knees right to the back of Uncle Sam there. 